Welcome to Slutty Activism, the podcast that teaches you to fight fascism with your genitals. Really, you can become the change you want to see in the world by becoming an extraordinary lover. No experience necessary. I'm your host, certified sex coach and professional sexual revolutionary, Sarah Martin. Let's get started. Hello, friend. Today, I've got two questions for you. Who are you? What do you want? When I first meet someone who might become a client, or someone attending a workshop, or even someone who has become a client, these two questions are at the forefront of my curiosity. A surprising number of people have spent years, maybe their whole lives, defining who they are and what they want in terms of the expectations of others. At some point, they learned that being who they are or openly expressing their desires was unwanted or, for some people, actually and acutely dangerous. In an effort to stay safe and move through the world more or less unmolested, they adopted ways of thinking and behavior that were pleasing or acceptable to others. Uh, No shade on any of this, by the way. If you're nodding along or if you're feeling shame burning a hole in your chest because you recognize your own self-betrayal in these descriptions, listen, you did what you had to do. You did the best you could with the resources you had at the time. It's not your fault. You are not to blame if you struggle to articulate who you are or what you want. There are a whole host of factors at play and they very likely impacted you when you were much more vulnerable than you are now. It's also not your fault that these behaviors continue to affect you. For the vast majority of people I have worked with, and even for me when I was at the beginning of my journey, so much is a function of unconscious habit persisting from the time when those habits kept you safe. They were necessary at one point, and... You are a badass and you have made it through that time. So let's gather up armloads of compassion for past you who went through some real painful shit related to your personhood and your desires. And let's acknowledge that those same behaviors that once kept you safe are exactly the kind of behaviors that will keep you away from experiencing what you want if you do not begin to shift them. If I had to sum up uh, in simple terms the impact of basing who you are and what you want on the desires and expectations of others, it's that these behaviors serve one main purpose. They keep you hidden. It's understandable, isn't it? If you, the real you, are hidden, then you're safe. You cannot be found out, exposed, and harmed. Your squishy center is surrounded by thick, impenetrable stone walls that keep those that seek to hurt you out. (sighs) But think about it for a moment. Those thick stone walls also keep out the people who want to know you. They wind up separating you from the connection you so deeply crave. They create the frustration and loneliness that I know many of you are experiencing or have experienced in your relationships. And those thick stone walls can easily become the bastion of fascism in the hearts of people, the deepest down fortifications that can be the hardest to root out. Your stone walls divide you, separate you, and isolate you from others. They have functionally protected you in the past from people who genuinely meant you harm. So you can see that not only do they have value, but they have helped you survive. But it all comes at a cost. If this division, separation, and isolation becomes entrenched, it can fuel fear. And not just any fear mind, but survival fear. And survival fear, oh my god, that is the lifeblood of fascism. At its core, fascism is only ever appealing because it promises to assuage the survival fears of a specific group of people. So I want to pause here to say that this, contrary to what you might be thinking right now, is not a message of pessimism. Far from it. 
All of us humans have, at one time or another, built a fortress within our hearts to protect our deepest selves. You've done it. I've done it. We do it because we are resilient social animals. Uh, those fascist assholes you see on TV, they do it too. In fact, if they're not the grifters and sociopaths at the top, you can almost guarantee that they are still deeply in that place fearful and seeking refuge in the arms of authoritarian leaders or policies. They do it because they want to be safe, and this is how they think that happens. None of this is to excuse those hateful and divisive behaviors, but rather a call to remember our shared humanity. To generate empathy, you have to be able to put yourself in someone else's shoes, right? And it's entirely possible that, given a different set of life circumstances, you could find yourself in exactly their position. What's more, if what's happening to them isn't some retractable evil, but rather humans having an understandable human experience, it means that they may find their way back. All is not lost. We have many reasons to hope, even when things seem so <sighs> discouraging at times. Fascism benefits when we feel and follow through on this impulse to remain hidden. Staying hidden and on the defensive further entrenches the power hierarchies that structure society. This effect becomes all the more potent when these behaviors are unconscious and practically invisible to you. Listening to me go on about this, you might be thinking to yourself, I go outside, I have social media. I'm not hiding in a cave trying to never be discovered. I'm not hidden. I had a client once a few years back, a young man who was in his late 20s. He was attractive and intelligent, working on his master's degree in a STEM field. He hadn't had partner sex up until that point and really badly wanted that to change. Uh, just a quick side note, also, very often my clients puzzle the shit out of me. And like the way they write about themselves and their challenges, I kind of sometimes wonder, gosh, am I actually about to meet someone for whom there is no hope? And so far, not only has that never been the case, but I am regularly taken aback and caught off guard by who actually shows up in the session room, uh, either in person or on Zoom. Because often, and this is weird, my clients are remarkably visually beautiful people though they would not describe themselves as beautiful or handsome when we first start working together. They have all been, without fail, highly intelligent people. Most have a strong sense of humor. Most have projects and hobbies that they are passionate about. And I know this all seems a bit tangential, but I promise this is very relevant to the topic of staying hidden. Um, but uh, anyway, back to the story of this client. Like most of my clients on the surface level, it wasn't immediately obvious why he was struggling to connect with others. I noticed that he didn't make much eye contact and was fidgeting a bit, though that can be normal nerves when doing something new like coming to a coaching session, <laughs> never mind a sex coaching session for the first time. After our initial consult, we started our work together by refreshing his dating profile and once we'd pulled up his OkCupid, uh, I was no longer surprised that my client had remained single for so long. <laughs> if you know you deserve better than what you've been told you have to settle for, and you're not ready to accept that this is just how it is when it comes to dating, sex, and relationships, then head on over to sluttyactivism.com, that's sluttyactivism.com, to get on the path to deeply pleasurable, more connected, and satisfying sexual experiences. Okay, now back to the show. His online dating profile had no pictures. He only listed generic interests like travel and food. He was self-deprecating throughout, making himself the butt of jokes and playing himself down. He didn't write anything about his hobbies or passions, sticking mainly to facts about his study and his work. He didn't write anything about what he wanted to experience with a partner. So there was almost nothing to go on in this profile. If you looked at it, 
you kind of wonder if someone started creating a profile and then abandoned it partway through, or maybe it was a burner profile for someone who was cheating on their partner. It wasn't attractive. Uh, What's more, it was such a bad representation of the vibrant, funny, intelligent person I was working with. Who he actually was in the fullness of his humanity was interesting and attractive, and it was completely obscured. He was hidden. And when you're hidden, it's much more difficult to find you. In short, There are many ways we keep ourselves hidden in the arena of dating and sex. Some of them can be more obvious, like not having a profile picture or not writing anything on your profile. And some of them can be less obvious, like keeping interest generic on a profile or sticking to polite small talk on dates. And some of them are deeply set and more challenging to root out, like becoming profoundly disconnected from your desire or only being able to frame your desires in relation to the desires of others. My client was hidden in all of these ways and more. Our work together was a slow, gentle process of gradually removing the layers, allowing him to reveal more of himself over time. He'd take a small step and observe what happened. For example, first, he added a picture of something related to his hobby to his dating profile, with a caption explaining that he loves that hobby. Later, he added one picture of himself that was taken by a friend. Eventually, he had every photo slot filled with clear, crisp pictures of himself taken by someone else, though he kept up that hobby photo too, just a bit further toward the back of the camera roll. Each of these small steps was a chance to pause and see how it felt to show a little bit more of who he was. And this wasn't just limited to a dating profile. Uh, Things normally are that way with clients. How you do anything is usually how you do everything. And so there were many other ways he had been staying hidden. He started going to in-person events, first meetups centered around a hobby, and then to speed dating events, and finally to different bars and social hangouts where interactions were unstructured and spontaneous. He became better and better able to articulate his desires and what experiences he was looking to share with a partner. The more the actual him became visible, the more people responded. <laughs> and, and we eventually had a session where he showed up and he looked exhausted. He started complaining to me about his time management skills, about how he'd accidentally double booked dates and he was tired from having been out on dates every single night that week. He'd succeeded himself right into a new set of problems. Only you can make the decision about how much of yourself you're prepared to reveal. Some people will make the choice to remain more or less hidden for their own safety. You are the expert on your own life. Caring for yourself can mean taking defensive measures. That said, it's important to acknowledge if you are in a place of relative safety now, and if what you desire is connected, pleasurable, deeply satisfying sex and relationships, you will remain frustrated if you remain hidden. Staying hidden might keep you single, Or it might keep you moving from one unsatisfying, frustrating, lonely relationship to another. If you've ever had a relationship, by the way, uh, it could be romantic, sexual, or platonic, where something just fell off in kind of a sad way, but you couldn't name it, one or both of you staying hidden could be the root cause. Because when you're hidden, there is always doubt. Do they actually want you? or just what you can do for them. When you're hidden, there's always anger. Why do you have to jump through all these fucking hoops when other people are just allowed to be who they are? When you're hidden, there is always a lack of trust. You always hold something back. When you try to connect from a place of hiding, it can leave you feeling invisible, unlovable, alone, and hopeless. The way out is by becoming able to be found and to allow yourself to be seen. 
You can do this little by little over time, just like my client did, or you can do this more quickly. The pace matters less than the trajectory. A commitment to visibility is actually part of slutty activism. The more findable you are, the more potential partners you will attract who are a great fit for the type of experiences you want to share. And as with all things slutty activism, it doesn't stop there. It can't. Your visibility has a profound impact on the people around you. You will improve your local dating pool simply by virtue of your participation in it. People who see your profile will be struck by how different it is from the rest. Your directness and clarity will stand out. Even if someone's not a match for you, they will be affected just by seeing a real example of something different. You'll also impact your friends and family. As you show up more as the real you, your relationships will change. And real talk, some people will fade out of your life. And some people will give you shit. And at the same time, some people will lean in. You might have a cousin come up to you at a family gathering and start sharing about their real, honest life, something that they had kept hidden for fear of rejection. Friends you've had for years may decide, at last, to share something they've kept bottled up for decades because of your example. Some people will reject you. I think we all know that on some level, and it's part of what we're afraid of. But the flip side of that, what we don't talk about nearly enough, is that other people will really, truly, finally connect with you in a deep and intimate way. And you will show others that there is another way. By your example, you will help others begin to take off their masks too. You will become a light in the darkness. Your courage in allowing yourself to be seen as you truly are will give permission to others to begin to do the same. You will illuminate another path, one that leads to empowerment and connection and away from fascism and fear. Does that sound good to you? Come join me. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to head over to sluttyactivism.com and learn how you can get started changing the world with pleasure. Also, make sure to follow the show so that you get notified when I drop a new episode. And if you want to connect with other like-minded people, come join us in Certainty for Overthinkers, the Slutty Activism Podcast Community Facebook group. Hope to see you there.